Thank you, Cathy, for having me here for a few moments. As Cathy said, I don't have a primary, but I am the only person here running for North Carolina State House, and it's 115 district. First thing I'd like to say, it's a great honor to be here, and I want to thank everybody that has supported me, that has helped me, that has irritated me, kept me motivated. I thank you for all your help. The other great thing, the other thing that I'm very proud of is standing in front of this American flag. As you probably all know, I'm a new legal US citizen. And it's, uh, it was a hard battle, seven years to get there. But I wouldn't have changed anything to, to get to where I was. Now, there was a lot of great speakers up here tonight. We had uh, Dr. Joe. Mike Fryer, we had Don, and we had um, Eric, sorry Eric, I I'm going to call you Bill Graham there for a second. But um, I just want to talk a little bit about um, state issues. Uh, we, we've been listening to about county issues, which are very important, and that's what this meeting is tonight. But some of the, some of the county issues can also be fought on the state ground, on the state stage. And one of the first ones that I'd like to just basically touch on, I'll just touch on a few. One is the property transfer tax. I don't know if any of you know that or know that, but my opponent, Bruce Goforth, had voted for that, but it didn't get through the, the, the Senate last year. It didn't get into the budget. And this, the transfer tax is where if you have property, either a house or land, and you want to sell it, you have to pay the government a transfer tax, and they're talking about 2009 allowing counties to either increase their sales tax or to uh, have a property transfer tax. Another issue that uh, I think is very, very important is forced annexation. I am I oppose forced annexation. I think it's a very un-American thing, and I feel that. We as a, a people, and I, and I consider myself a member of the new American family, I think we as a people have to stand up and fight, what Don said, unless you get up and fight for your rights, you're go they're going to be taken away, and they're being taken away as we stand. Forced annexation basically is where any community, town or whatever, decides that they wanted uh, to, to increase their tax base and take your rights away or double taxation, and I'm definitely against that. Another one is the temporary sales tax. We have a couple of temporary sales taxes in North Carolina, and I'd like to get them repealed. Basically, you know, they're temporary, they should be gone. Another one would be the 2% on food. I think it's really sort of very strange that we have one party, or the powers what you talked about, looking after the poor people, yet they put 2% of a tax on all the food that they buy out of a supermarket. And I really think that that should be taken off. Another issue that uh, I think that would be a great help to Buncombe County and, and uh, all the people that get through the primary running for county commissioner, I would like, hopefully, that they could come up with ideas where people that get into the state house can help you with your issues. And one of them that I think is a very innovative idea, and one person here thought of it, is taking the property tax off vacant and unused land. And that will do two things. One, it'll allow people to hold on to their property where they won't have to sell it, like what Mike was talking about. And another thing, it'll help cut down development. Because then if people don't have to sell their property, well then developer, developers won't be able to buy it and then we won't have all the problems that we're having. Another issue that seems to be quite prevalent is getting nonprofits to open their books for audits, particularly ones that get taxpayers' money. I think it's very important that they open their books. Somebody said to me, well, by saying that, you're going to get a lot of people that depend on non-profits for their, their livelihood vote against you. I haven't said get rid of any non-profits. I've only said open your books. Any non-profit that isn't willing to do that should be closed down, and then there'll be more money for the ones that are willing to be honest and open.
with the people. I think that uh, another issue would be, I think it would be prudent on the state legislator to basically say to any county or city that doesn't enforce the 287G program that they're not going to get any funding. And I feel that that would, that would be a good motivator. Money is always a good motivator for, either, for governments. They all love money. And I think that that would really be something to sort of encourage them to one way of helping the, this illegal alien problem, cutting it down. I know I went through the system, so I know what, what I'm talking about. I think it would be prudent to try and get the, the lottery money that was stolen out of, you know, the, the educational funds that were stolen because of the lottery back into Buncombe County. We have a lot of problems with the educational system up in Buncombe. And one of the reasons is the money has been taken out of it. I think at the moment, the educational fund is $58 million below what it was before the budget, before the lottery even came in. Another, at, at, another thing that I'm sort of, uh, will push for and fight for is Jessica's law. I think it's, a, it's time for it to be done. And, uh, when I'm down in Raleigh, I'll definitely push for that. I think it's very important for people to understand that I'm, even though heading down to Raleigh to become a member of the legislature doesn't mean that you have to sell your soul. I'm going down there to work for the people. I'm not going down there to be a member of the government. Uh, my opponent seems to love it down there. And I remember asking him a question about um, giving money to uh, big businesses, uh, Goodyear and Bridgestone. And, he's, and I asked him, are you going to vote against uh, the governor's veto? And he said, well, I really don't need to tell you because you wouldn't vote for me anyway. And I think that that's, that just gives an idea that just because I'm of a different persuasion, different party, he thinks that because of that, that I wouldn't vote for him, which is not true. If he did the right thing, I'd vote for him. And that's one of the reasons why I'm running now, because he's not doing the right thing. <laughs> Um, it's very hard to stand up and talk in front of people, as uh, Don would say, and I, I, I talk funny. I'm deaf, I have a speech impediment, and, uh, he, and he ain't from around here. I don't like to say that, he likes to say that. <laughs> and, um, but I think it's important in order, for, in order to show that you, that you love your country, to stand up and do something. You know, Joe went through the process and he was badly hurt after the, after the election for mayor and it takes great courage to get back up to it. Don is a fighter anyway. He's going to be in a fight no matter where he's going to be. Mike here is fighting for, you know, property rights and stuff, which is very good. And I think that I'm doing the same thing, but it's on a, on a state level rather than a county level. And... Um, I would just like to say thank you for allowing me to speak.